Hey everyone, welcome back to The Quilted Story. My name is Kathleen and my channel is all about my quilting, my machine embroidery, and my cross stitch projects. I'm hoping that you will see something here today that will inspire you to maybe start a new project or even pick up one of your whips and get a little bit of time in on that. But either way, just get started on something and move forward and maybe today I will inspire you to you know start something new or just get going so let's get started right away because I have a lot to talk about and um, but but before we start with today's program I wanted to make sure that I thanked Dina from the nightly stitcher she reached out to me um, a few weeks ago and she said she had happened upon my my YouTube channel and she wanted to give me a shout out on her YouTube channel, The Nightly Stitcher. And she wanted to encourage me that I was on the right track and that I was doing good and that she really enjoyed my videos. So she did just that. She gave me a warm welcome on her channel, The Nightly Stitcher. And she was very sweet and, and left it in her show notes so that all of her subscribers could find me. And I had a really big bump in subscribers just because of Sweet Dina. So thank you so much, Dina. I really appreciate it. And this is a shout out for Dina over at the Nightly Stitcher. I'll link her down below just in case you have not watched her videos. Her and I seem to do a lot of similar projects. So it was great to um, connect with her and we chatted back and forth a little bit. And um, she is a very, very sweet lady. And her pups are extra adorable. So if you like puppies, you know, dogs, um, go on over there and check her out. She's always showing um, the dogs coming and going and whatnot. And um, they're adorable. So um, go over and check her out and um, let her know that I sent you back over to her. And she'll get a kick out of that. So I just want to say thank you. Also, I wanted to thank all of the people who came over to my YouTube channel and subscribed. Like I said, I did have a bump in subscriptions and I got a ton of comments. Almost all of them were positive. I only got a couple of little negative ones, but that's okay. You know, this happens. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not everybody likes what you do and that's okay. That's why there's so many floss tubes and YouTube channels to choose from. If you don't like something or perhaps it's not the the venue that you're looking for in, you know, projects or whatever, you can just move on to the next one. It's totally okay. Nobody worries about that. So if you see something that maybe because my channel is about quilting, machine embroidery, and cross stitch projects, if there's something in there that you don't like, I do try to divide it up in the three segments so that you can skip through it if you're not interested in, say, the quilting, or if you're not interested in the cross stitch, or if you're not interested in the machine embroidery. But I will say that a lot of the things that I do in my machine embroidery projects <clears throat> can be used in a cross stitch finish. It's basically the same thing, um, and I finished um, my items, my FFOs and with my cross stitch, I finish them in the same manner as I do with my machine embroidery project. So you may want to watch that even if you don't own an embroidery machine because it may inspire you or give you an idea of how to finish something with your cross stitch projects the way maybe the way I did my machine embroidery projects. So but either way, if there's something you're not interested in, just skip through it. I've had people suggest that I make separate videos for my quilting, another video for my machine embroidery, and another video for my cross stitch projects. And anybody who knows or who has been making these videos knows how much work it is. So <laughs> there's a lot more to it than people I think imagine. And so these are my three 
you know, likes. These are the things that I do. And so I like to incorporate them all in one video. If I'm hoping that doesn't offend people and I'm hoping that you will still return and watch my upcoming videos. But let's get started right away into my quilty projects. The very first thing I want to show you is what I am planning for 2024 with my quilty projects. Now, I'm just going to briefly talk about these and I'll talk more about them as I'm working on them. But these are the three large ones that I have planned. The first one, let me get my, let me get my tote, is I put all of my fabrics in this tote. See, I've cut all my strips. And the fabric line is called Strawberries and Rhubarb. Let me show you the line. Strawberries and Rhubarb was designed by Joanna, Joanna Figueroa for Fig Tree Quilts for Moda. And these are the ones I chose from her Strawberries and Rhubarb line. It is a couple years old, but you may be able to find it like either on the secondary market or some shops still have like, you know, jelly rolls or, you know, the bakery cuts. So you may be able to find some, but Joanna, Joanna has her, all her lines tend to go together. So even if you find one of her newer lines, I'm sure that you will be just as excited about it. Now, I bought the half yard bundle simply because I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. But what I did was I pulled out, there was a bunch of grays from this line and I pulled those out because I wanted the quilt that I'm gonna make to be mostly the, um, the peachy colors and the greens and the creams and whites. So those are the fabrics that I chose that I'm going to use. I think that I ended up using out of the line, I'm using like 31 or 32 of them. So that's from the line. That's what the line looks like. And as you can see, I started cutting my strips and then I put them in the bucket. This is just a, an old bucket that I had from my, from my daughter's um, college days. And I had my husband, it used to be lime green, had my husband paint it white. Voila, I have a storage bucket. So Start looking at things in your house that can just, you know, shoot it with a can of paint and you're all set to go. You don't have to have something new. So the pattern that I'm going to use is something that I have designed the paper piece. I'm going to paper piece this particular quilt and it is going to be an ongoing quilt. And I'm, not, I'm not in a big hurry about getting it finished, you know, at a certain time frame. I'm making it for myself, but I did want to show you what it's going to look like when I finish it. I have designed the quilt in EQ8. I do all my design work for my quilts in electric quilt, and I use the version eight. So that's what my quilt's gonna look like. It is a log cabin, and I will have the pattern that I'm gonna use for my paper piece block. I will have that available in my Etsy shop in the next few days. It may already be loaded by the time this video uploads onto YouTube because my internet is slightly slow and so sometimes it takes like a whole day for my videos to actually upload on YouTube. You know, it is what it is, right? So, but that's what my quilt's going to look like. I'm real excited about it because I have not made a quilt in this colorway and I thought, you know, that'll be fun. So take a look if you're interested in a paper piece pattern for a um, quilt block for the log cabin. The, the listing will be in my Etsy shop. I'll link that down below and it will be available in three sizes. Um, so when, and it also includes the fabric recipe cards, which tells you how to cut your strips. So, and you will also, as a part of the download, you will receive this printout so that if you want, wanted to either follow along with me or you want to make a quilt similar to the, my layout, you will be able to print that out and you'll know how to twist and turn your blocks. So take a look at it over there. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave me a comment down below and I will get back to you. If you have noticed, when someone leaves a comment in my, on my videos, no matter what video it is, I always, 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 I don't know if I can say that enough, I always respond to them because a lot of times they involve questions. So 
If you have a question, please feel free to leave me a comment and I usually get back to you within a day or two tops. So don't be afraid to ask. There are no silly questions in my mind and I'm hoping that you won't be afraid to reach out to me and either leave a comment on my videos or ask me a question. Feel free to do either. I really appreciate it. So that's my very first quilty plan. My second quilty plan actually is going to be using, I'm going to use the triangles on a roll, I got the, um, let's see, what size did I get? I got the three inch finished triangles on a roll from Fat Quarter Shop. So I haven't ever used these. And I thought, you know, let's give a plug to Fat Quarter Shop. Everybody loves Fat Quarter Shop. So let's make my next project all about these triangle papers. They come in lots of different sizes and you can follow me along on my progress on my Instagram page. And so, you know, as I get started and talk, start talking about this particular project, I will link Fat Quarter Shop and I will also hashtag Fat Quarter Shop. So if you are wanting to make a quilt similar to mine, um, feel free. Don't feel like you have to do it in the same, same colorway. Pick total scraps, maybe pick a different colorway. I'm doing mine in reds, creams, and whites. So here is what, let me get the, the printout. Cause I did a printout in my EQ5 or EQ8 just so I could have something to visually look at. And this is what my quilt's gonna look like. It's gonna be all half square triangles. That's why I'm using the triangle paper. And I'm using, like I said, I'm using the three inch finish, but it does come in various sizes. So if you wanna do one bigger or smaller, or if you just wanna do a fraction and make it a wall hanging or make it a pillow, do a totally different layout. You know, half square triangles are fabulous for lots and lots of different layouts. So feel free to um, follow me on Instagram where I'll show my progress. I'll also show progress here on my upcoming videos. This is another quilt project that I have no um, plans to when it's gonna be finished. These are just my plans for 2024. So let me show you my fabrics that I've chosen. What I did was instead of using a line of fabrics, I went to my stash. I know it's hard to believe Kathleen has a large stash, but you got to remember, I've been quilting for over 35 years, close to 40 years. So I've been accumulating stash that long. So when you think about it, it's easy to do over a 35, 40 year period. But what I did was I chose a bunch of different reds from all the way from like, you know, it reads solid, but they're not solid fabrics. They are tone on tone prints. And then I went all the way into the red and whites because I thought that would give it a lot of play on color. Now, if you notice this fabric seems like paper, like it's really, really stiff. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, but here's the, those are all the reds that I chose. And then I chose a bunch of different creams, light creams and whites all from my stash. And as you can see, these are stiff also. Now, the reason why my fabrics are stiff is because those particular ones I starched. And the reason why I starched them is because I'm making half square triangles. And even though I'm using the paper, I find that I get a more accurate block without distortion if I starch the fabrics prior to cutting into them. So I found out from my triangle paper what size I needed to cut my, my fabrics. And then I overcut them slightly because I knew I was going to starch them. And then I starched them. And then I press, after they dried, I, I pressed them really good. And that's what makes this like crunchy like paper is what, how I describe it. It's very, very stiff. Now, there's various ways of starching. Kimberly over at Fat Quarter Shop uses a faultless spray for all of her starching. And I do use that. I use the blue can because I think I used to use the other one, but I found, I, 
I was having a hard time finding it, but I was able to find the blue can. This has a little, it's a little bit heavier starch. Um, I only use this when I'm doing small amounts of starching. Like say I want to starch a, a little piece of fabric to make a, um, some stiff binding or a stiff or a piece of small, small amounts of fabric, not yardage. I do not usually use the spray can when it comes to yardage and it's just a personal thing but if you spray that much fabric um you really need to be outside because you shouldn't be breathing this in so i kind of look at it as um you know something that might be hard on my lungs so i try not to breathe this in so if i'm going to do a if i'm going to start just a small amount of fabric some strips or whatnot i do use the can but if i'm going to starch a lot of fabric like with these reds and these whites that i just showed you when i'm starching a lot of it i will buy stay flow in the blue bottle it's a little half gallon i do believe yeah it is two quarts and i found mine on walmart.com because my walmart doesn't carry it I can't find it in the grocery store. I have heard people say they find it in the grocery store. They find it at their Target, at their local Walmart. I did find it on Walmart, but I had to buy it at walmart.com. So, you know, neither here or there, they do still make that product. And what I did was, it's a liquid, and I mixed mine half and half, half starch and half water. And I just made it, you know, made a little bucket up and I mixed it in there and got it stir, stirred in real good. You could use any kind of bucket or bowl or whatever. Um, I just had a, an empty bucket that I used. And then I dunked the fabric in there and I squeezed it out. And then I just hung them dry outside on my porch. And I do believe I posted a picture of all my fabrics drying on my porch on my Instagram if you want to see how that looks. My husband just rigged something up with um, some of those PVC pipes and a couple of ladders. It's very professional looking. <laughs> but, you know, whatever works is what I say. I didn't care what it looked like. I was just trying to dry the starch on the fabric. So after it dried completely, then um, with a half and half, I got very stiff fabric. You can change that and do a quarter of the stay flow and three quarters water, whatever is your preference. You know, maybe you want less starch, less stiffness. Um, maybe you want more and you want to use it full strength. I've never used it full strength, but I know people that do. So after I, after it dried real good, I brought it into my studio and I pressed them all and compulsively organized them by color. And now I'm ready to start combining it with my half square triangle paper from Fat Quarter Shop and so that I can make my um, half, half square triangles. So that's how I starch my fabric. There are a, a ton of ways to starch fabric and just because that's the way I do it doesn't make it, you know, the best. It's just what works for me. So if you find that another, um, you know, technique works better for you, I say go for it. Do whatever is that makes you happy and gives you the results that you want. So this is how I do mine. Small batches or small piece of fabric. I do use the Niagara um, Faultless Spray Starch. And I do use it in a well-ventilated area. And, um, and then if I'm starching large amounts of fabric, I do use the Stay Flow. So that's that on starching. So let me get this out of the way and then go on to my third project that I have planned in my quilty for 2024. And that is, I saw this particular little booklet come up on my Instagram. It's called Christmas Quilting with Wendy Shepard. And I bought my book on Amazon. It's where I was able to find it, but I have seen it in various places. Um, I am going to make this star quilt with the tree in it, but I'm not going to use those Christmas colors. I am going to use blues, all batiks. And I got all of my batik blues from Fat Quarter Shop. They have a really good selection. I just chose some lights, some mediums, and some darks. And I may even add a couple of darker blues from my stash. I haven't decided that 
just just right now but um i did get all of these from the fat quarter shop and i bought half yard half yard pieces of everything because I looked at the pattern and it looked like that's about would give me more than enough and I'd be able to go very scrappy and still you know get that scrappy look with all those different blues now I'm gonna pull regular cotton whites different ones from my stash and that's what I'm going to be using for the background. I do want that to be scrappy because I like the play on color it gives me. So, but that's totally up to you. You could use all one white or all one cream. You could do really any colorway. I just wanted to do blue because I have a ton of Christmas quilts. And I thought that would be like a winter blues quilt. You know, it would give me something different that I could have out after Christmas, but before springtime. So, and once again... I have no set date as to when that quilt will be finished. I'm just part of my quilty plans for 2024 and I'm going to get started on that soon. If you are interested in following along with me, feel free to follow me on Instagram. That's probably what, where I'll post my progress and I will show some progress here on my upcoming videos. So I hope that this might inspire you to join me with either one of these three um, quilt projects. All of my quilts are going to be um, lap size quilts are not going to be bed size quilts because you only need so many bed size quilts and I don't have to be insane before the day is over and the quilt is done. That's, that's my progress. <laughs> that's my thought process. So you can make yours as large as you want. You can make it as small as you want. Maybe you want to make a wall hanging. Maybe you want to make a pillow. So I'm going to make mine lap size quilts because I think that would be, you know, if I decide to give it away as a gift or whatever, or keep them, I don't have all king size quilts in my suitcases of quilts in my closet over there. <laughs> so, okay, so those are my three projects, quilty projects for 2024. Now, let me get that out of the way. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you was something that I've already made. It was in my quilty projects 2024, but since it's been a hot minute since my last video, I went ahead and made them. And it's some new project bag sets for my cross stitch. So let me show you those. The first one I made is out of this gorgeous blue batiks. And believe it or not, these batiks came from a mini jelly roll from Joanne Fabrics. Can you believe it? I know. They were they were really, really nice. Um I got several rolls of it because it only comes with 20 strips. And I think in the 20 strips you got. 10 strips of different fabrics and so you got two of each so you got 20 20 20 20 two and a half inch strips from salvage to salvage but I, these are the ones i picked out of it that i kind of liked i made me the project bag and then i had this fabric in my stash and i thought it went really well with the front of the of the bag so inside my bag i have a zipper front and this is the same bag I zipper, I make a zipper placket. I bind all of my bags. I quilt my bags both front and back. And inside my bag, I went ahead and I made myself, first I made a little zipper case. It's called a spool case. I made one of those out of that matching fabric. And then the next item I made was, let me see if I can get it right side up was my floss bobbin keeper and I went ahead and I sewed the floss buddy inside and here's the little pockets I'm going to put my flosses in my DMC car um wound bo floss bobbins this is called a floss bobbin keeper and this is just the way I stitch I tend to use this item to put my carded over dyed flosses in and then I floss I bobbinate all of my flosses for DMC and I put them in here by the project so like I've got this holds 30 or more spools depending on how full your bobbins are and then the whole thing snaps shut across the side and leaves everything secure in there now, on the interior where I said I sewed that floss buddy in, that also snapped shut. 
it has a needle parker and this is for like your loose threads and then you can snap it shut it's sewn into the floss bobbin keeper so it keeps everything together and secure and you don't have to worry about um you know having one more piece fall off the um arm of your chair or your table while you're working on your on your cross stitch project so that's those are the three pieces I use when I make me a new bag. That's the set that I make. Now it has a really cute polka dot fabric on the interior. These fabrics that I used for the back and for that interior, all just from my stash. I just, you know, once I got the panel made in the front, I just looked to see what fabrics I had in my stash that looked like it went together. So I'm really happy with that because it's the first batik. It's all batiks, except for like the back. The back is just a regular cotton. So I was really excited about that one. I'm, I'm going to probably kit up something new since I'm going to be showing you some finishes that I did. Now the next project bag set that I made is my Reindeer Games set. And this is a fabric line called Reindeer Games by me and my sister Formoda. And here's the back of it. It's got really cute little reindeer all over it. I used a stripe binding stripe binding for the placket, zipper placket, and stripe binding for the actual outside binding. I quilted the front, I quilted the back, and inside there is the background fabric from the, um, the Me and My Sister Reindeer Games. So I did use, this is all from the same line except for the red and white stripe. That's just something, I think I picked that up at Hobby Lobby, I think. So inside there, I did make me um, a spool case. I used a coordinating print that came in the line. So it's my little spool case. And then I made me a floss bobbin keeper. I used the little reindeer guys, because they're cute. And inside there, I used the candy canes for the floss buddy. And here's the interior where I'm gonna put all my floss bobbins. It's the same setup, you know, with, um, your floss buddy in the middle and your floss bobbin keeper holds 30 bobbins or more depending on how full your bobbins are. So basically those are my new cases I made for myself this year or this month and um, I haven't decided which one I'm or what project I'm going to put in these two so I'll just wait and see. So I, I try to make a a couple of new ones for me you know with some of the new lines or you know something that I've got in my stash or whatever I try to make something new you know at least once a month or twice a month and um, that way I'm building up my stash of, of quilty patchwork bags and the matching sets for my cross stitch projects so that is everything about my quilty plans for 2024 now I have other project bags planned but I'll show those as I make them and then in the next upcoming videos. And I will update those, those pictures on Instagram also. So the next part of the program is going to be about my machine embroidery projects. I just have a couple little ones. And I did get a question with about my machine embroidery. And I did answer this lady um, personally, but I wanted to kind of address it here because it's something that I never thought about showing on my videos when I talk about my machine embroidery projects. So I'm gonna show you two Easter projects that I made with my machine embroidery, or my embroidery machine, excuse me. And once again, I have a brother, PR655 Entrepreneur, and it is a multi-needle, six needles. It is a free arm. It's a large machine, but I have been machine embroidering for um, 14 years plus. So I really love that machine. It's a brother. Um, I did buy it secondhand. So, you know, if your budget is smaller or whatever, you can buy smaller machines, larger machines. And don't be afraid to go into the secondary market because of the fact that usually you can get a better price and maybe get more for for your money because you'll get maybe maybe they have stabilizers left over fabrics left over um frames you know any of the extras that they bought they usually include it when you when you buy something secondhand so don't be afraid to go into that secondary market if you are thinking or contemplating buying a machine that is for embroidery um, if you have any questions about machine embroidery, 
feel free to leave it down below and I will get back to you right away. But the first project I want to show you is something I've made in the past and it's a kitchen towel and it's my little chicky in an egg. I just love this little guy or girl. I think it's a girl. Yeah, let's call it a girl because she's wearing pink. Um, she's a little chicky with her bow across the front of it. This design is actually from Baby K's Appliques. It is now under the umbrella of Gemini Red Embroidery Designs. Um, Teresa is the original designer of this particular design and she sold her business to Gemini Red. So you can still get it. I'll link that down below. It comes in various sizes and it's a very, very cute machine applique for your embroidery machine. Now, the question that I got from a gal um, on one of my last videos was, could you show the stabilizer, what it looks like on the back side of your kitchen towels? So here's my front of my kitchen towel. And the back side of it, I always use what my, my theory is, and a lot of people who machine embroider is, if you wear it, don't tear it. And what that means is you don't want to have a stabilizer in an item if you're going to wear it, which means anything that you're going to launder. Okay. So that would include a kitchen towel. Okay. If you're going to wear it, you don't want to tear the, be able to tear the, um, the stabilizer. You want it to be a permanent cutaway. And that's what I used. I use a product called No Show Mesh. I usually use a fusible. Let me see if you can see it. You can see that it's very thin. It's, you know, but it's a cutaway and that will stay in on the back side of my towel. And it also will stay in on the back side of a garment. If you put a design on a garment, you would leave that in. It's a cutaway. And basically what that does is it permanently stabilizes your design for the whole life of it. You know, you don't tear that away. Okay, so um, that's called No Show Mesh. I use the Floriani brand just because I like it, but there are different brands, and that's what it looks like from the back side. And you can see how pretty that is. It's very neat and clean, and I do trim up close to the actual design. So if you look right here, it's very close to the top of the hat of the little chicky in her egg. So it is called No Show Mesh. It comes in fusible and non-fusible, whichever is your preference. Um, I use it for anything that I don't want to tear, like um, a, a wearable garment, a kitchen towel. Um, that's usually the two items that I'm making that I like to include a No Show Mesh because it's not, you don't see it through your garment. So if you put it on a white garment, you won't see it through the garment because you're just trimming up around the actual outside perimeter of the design, but you won't see that. That's why it's called no show mesh. Um, and it's not bulky. It's, it bends and it, um, contours to a body. So if you're making a baby's body suit, you're not going to have that bulky, you know, uh, crunchy, you know, placket like that you get on some other cutaways that are stiff and not pliable. That's just my personal opinion. Um, you know, experiment with your embroidery machine, see what you like and that works best for you. There are different stabilizers for different applications. This is just what I do with my kitchen towels. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to leave me a comment or a question down below and I'll try to get back with you as soon as I can. Now, let me put that over to the side. I'm gonna make a stack over here. It's probably gonna fall over and hit me. The next item that I made with my machine embroidery or my embroidery machine is another design from Baby K's and it's my Easter pillow. It's a pillow wrap. So as you can see, I just wrapped it's a it's a panel. I wrap it around this pillow and I velcro it to the back. Now this is called waiting on the bunny. These this the design and the font is from Baby K's Appliques, which is now under that umbrella of Gemini Red Embroidery Designs. I'll link that down below. You can still get these designs and that font from Gemini Red. It comes in various sizes. 
and I bought this pink, hot pink um, pillow cover. Um, it's just a, it zips on and off. And I got that at Ikea. And then I just made a pillow wrap because then I have one pillow and pillow form and I can make a bunch of different wraps and I'm just storing the flat wrap. Now, when I made this wrap, I stitched it right through warm and natural batting. So let me show you, let me take that off of there so I can show you a little bit what it looks like because I don't have to put it back on. The back side of this design you can see it's just warm and natural batting. I used that as my stabilizer because I knew I was going to leave it in because I was making a, um, a wrap, a pillow wrap. And so I stitched, I embroidered through the top fabric, which was adhered to my warm and natural batting. And then I just made a panel on it. I left it on there. It stabilized it beautifully. Look how nice it is. And it, it doesn't pucker. That's what I, that's a nice thing. If you can leave, if you're doing a project that you can leave warm and natural batting in the back side of it, you know, because it is like the pillow front or it's a pillow wrap or even I've even done it on some of my ornaments. If you can leave that warm and natural batting in there as a permanent stabilizer, I say use it because it gives it a little bit of poof and it stabilizes it permanently and it, and it really controls any embroidery puckers. So you'll be really happy with that. I just use a piece of warm and natural. You can use the warm and natural, you can use the warm and white, which is basically the same product. It's 100% cotton batting. So um, if you have any questions about that one, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Okay, so that's all of my machine embroidery projects. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what? I did have a question from a gal and I did answer her personally, like I always do with my questions and comments. Um, I, she asked me about my red and green clippies. Okay. I have my red ones in the, in the bowl and then I have my green ones just clipped on the side. She asked me if she could use these green clippies, which are larger in size, if she could use them to hold her fabric on a Q-snap. And I'm really sorry to say, but no, you cannot. And the reason why is because they don't open that big. If you look at that, it only opens maybe an inch. I don't even know if it's an inch. And it's just not, you know, it's not a big enough bite. And here's the difference between my red ones and my little, and my green ones. The green ones work great on an embroidery hoop you know, like a little wooden hoop or um, that kind of, you know, even the nerd hoops, the plastic nerd hoops, it will work on that. Um, these little red ones will clip your fabric out of the way, but not onto the actual hoop. I always use the green one to hook it onto a hoop. So, um, but no, you cannot clip that through, you know, onto a, um, those little white, um, what did I just call them? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm losing my train of thought. The Q-snap. You cannot clip those on a Q-snap. They're just not, they don't have a big enough bite. So she she asked me that and I thought, you know, somebody else may, you know, want to know that. So I went ahead and added it to my list of things to talk about here today. So that's, and those red clippies are made by Clover. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at Joann's. And you can get them at Fat Quarter Shop. There's a ton of places you can get them. I love them. I have them in various places in my studio. And I use them with both quilting, with my sewing, my regular sewing, and my machine embroidery, and my cross-stitch projects. So I do get a lot of uses out of both the green and the red. So, you know, feel free to check those out. See if you like them. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is all about my cross stitch. So, if you skipped over the quilting and the machine embroidery, now we're at to now we're on to the cross stitch projects that I've been working on. The first thing I want to talk about are my whips. Now, whips are works in progress. I'm going to show you the bag that I'm using, that I'm storing my, my whips in progress, and then what the project is inside my bag. 
Now, the first one, let's see. The first one is, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, I have so much stuff. It's all around me. It's behind me. It's around me. It's everywhere. Now, the first project that I is in my glow in the dark Halloween bag. I've shown this one before. This fabric here on the back actually glows in the dark. And a funny story here is I made this exact set for my sister for Christmas, my little sister Lisa. And um, I've told her 175 times that it glows in the dark. Apparently, she did not listen to her big sister because she calls me three months after she received this gift. And she says, oh my gosh, I had no idea that thing glowed in the dark. She said, I left it on my on my couch after working on her on the project that she was working on. She left it on her couch and she turned all the lights off and she turned back and realized it was glowing in the dark. And I'm like, I know I told you that. That's the reason why I made it for you, because it glows in the dark. She loves Halloween. So what does that say about your little sister? She's not exactly, you know, waiting on my every word. Can you believe it? I know. <laughs> okay, Lisa, I still love you, but pay attention to when your older sister is talking to you. This glows in the dark. Love it. In this project, okay, that was a little tangent. In this bag, I have a project that I got started. It's by Autumn Lane Stitchery. It's called Halloween Night. And isn't it fabulous? So cute. I saw this project being um, finished on Helen D's um, floss tube, and I thought, I have got to make that. So what I did was I got started. I'm actually making it twice. I'm sure I talked about that before, um, but here is my progress. Here, let me get, hold on. Let me go ahead and move this guy off of there so I can put it on a board. So bear with me while I switch them on the board. Here it is. I'm using 28 count lavender by Fabric Flare, two threads over two. And I'm using all the DMC called for, except for the actual, let me see, let me get the picture. See the outside circle? I It calls for like a dark brown, but I'm gonna do what Helen D did and use the 310 black for all of that outside perimeter circle. Because Helen knows what she's doing, and so, you know, I'm just gonna copy her, okay? So that's what I got so far on my first one. I didn't, I haven't even started the second one. I don't know. I wanna finish this one because I'm just, I'm loving it, so I'm just working on, concentrating on this one. I think I got a lot done, <clears throat> if you kind of look at the pattern. I've got a good chunk of it done. I'm really happy with it. So that is my Halloween night by Autumn Lane Stitchery and um, 28 count fabric flare in the color lavender. So I'll tell you, that fabric is fabulous. I really like fabric flare. That's just me, you know, cause I do like even weave. So I use either Ada or I use Lugana. And I really like that cause I get the model you know, look that I want. There's lots of colors to choose from. So check them out if you're looking for something new. Now, the next whip I'm working on is, that's Halloween night. And the next whip I'm working on is called Autumn Rules. And it's by Primrose Cottage Stitches. I love this one. It's very, 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 very cute. I'm working on, I'm work. I'm actually, once again, I'm making two of those and I have it in that. I still have all those projects in my Halloween bag. I've actually got four large projects in this one bag with all the floss, all the stuff, all the fabric, everything, the patterns, everything. So that's in my Halloween bag. And here is my progress so far. I've got the top section and I am stitching on 28 count vintage country mocha with all the called all the called for DMC floss. So I'm stitching two over two on the 32 count. So I got the first top section done. If you look at that, I have 
the words autumn rolls, the very top section. So here it is again. Love this one. This is one of those ones that you just can't put down. You know, it's really very pretty. I really like it. I've had a lot of fun stitching it. So, and I'm making two of those. Stay tuned for the finishes because I got one done. Okay. All right. So the next whip is my Kringles. And let me pull the Kringles pattern if I can figure out what I did with it. Oh, it's in my Kringles bag. Here's my Kringles bag. I keep my Kringles pattern in my Kringles bag. And here is what Kringles looks like. It's a department store by Little House Needleworks. And she's a big girl, so I'll be working on it for a little bit. But I just love this one. It's really a lot of fun. I have it in my Kringles bag. This is the fabric by Teresa Kogut called Kringle. It's got the Santas all around the back side, and I have all those matching accessories inside. So I have, I just have Kringle in this bag, no other projects, mostly because of the fact that it is large and it's ongoing. So I'm going to be working on it for a hot minute. Now, I did make some progress from my last video. What I did was I finished up you know, closing in these rooms. I had all this up here done, all the way down to this brickwork. What I did was I finished the brickwork on the side, and then I put the word Kringles with the snowflakes on either side, and I brought it down. This is gonna be the third section right here. So I think I'm, I'm making pretty good progress considering it is a big girl. And I'm stitching this on 32 count, no, take that back. I'm stitching that on 28 count vintage stormy night Lugana. Two threads over th two with a combination of DMC floss and um, some um, over dies. Now, the over die called for up here in the roof is supposed to be the same over die and it's called black coffee and you were supposed to also use it in the windows and in this black background here, and then in the word Kringle sign. And then there's a bunch of wrought iron that's all supposed to be using that black coffee, but I didn't think it was dark enough for what I wanted it to look like. So I only use the black coffee up here in the roof tiles, okay? But I'm using the 310 black in the windows and anywhere else it calls for the black coffee, like down here and in the word Kringles. And, they're, and in that wrought iron that will be down here on the front doors of the Kringle store. I'll be using all 310 Black. That's just a personal preference. Um, I just was kind of going by the look that I thought I was getting when I looked at the pattern. See, um, let me show you that pattern again. Hold on. Let me show you that pattern again. Because if you look at it, doesn't it look really dark? It looks like black to me. So I was really happy with the um, charcoal, or what was it called? Black coffee. I was happy with the black coffee by Classic Color Works for the roof, the tile. But I really wanted the black windows and like the black behind the spanner and the black on the Kringle sign. And of course, all the black that's going to be the wrought iron. I felt like that needed to be like a rich black. But, you know, that's just a personal preference. I've seen it done both ways. So, you know, whatever suits your, your fancy is the way you should do it. But that's mine. I think I'm making pretty good progress. What do you think? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this thing for this year because I do put it away. I work on it for a little bit, you know, a couple weeks, and then I do put it away because um, I think because it's big. So I, that way I don't get overwhelmed by it. I just, you know, I'll go pick up something small, and I'll be showing some, some smalls. So that's my Kringles, and like I said, in my Kringle bag. Okay, now let's see. The last one that I have that's my whips for this year is in my Easter bag. And this one is super adorable. I talked about this, this bag. It's a, it's a different kind of patchwork bag. All over print. I mean, same accessories, you know. Um, but the pattern is called Happy Easter by Sugar Stitches. And I got a good start on it. I'm about one quarter of the way done. Woohoo. It isn't going to be done this year, I don't think. 
I'm hoping to slate it for a finish for 2025 before Easter. So it's called Happy Easter by Sugar Stitches. And um, I do believe she has an Etsy shop. That's where I got mine. Now, this is, okay, I got everything in that bag. Let me put this up here. I am stitching this on 16 count light lime green. You can see it's like a model green by Fabric Flare. And I did change the word Easter is supposed to be, let me show you. The word Easter is supposed to be stitched in yellow, but I decided to use the blue that I'm using for like the bunnies bows because my light lime green did not let the yellow DMC floss show up very good. It looked, it kind of got lost in it. So I decided to go with the blue. So I did make that change. I'm making pretty good progress. 16 count fabric flare, two threads over one, and it's all DMC. So, you know, it, there's a lot of, a lot of pattern to the actual stitches, you know, like there's all these dots in the bunny and there's dots in the butterfly. So that kind of gives you that play on color that you would sometimes achieve with, um, the over dye threads. That's why it's all DMC. So that one is in my Easter bag. That's my last whip that I worked on in this last few weeks. And I'm real happy with the progress. I think I did pretty good considering that I do have some finishes too. Now let's go on to my finishes, my soft finishes that, which are flimsies. That means the cross stitch part is all done, but I do not have it FFO'd. The first one is my kind and gentle and oops. Yeah. Let me show it to you this way. Kind and gentle by Artful Offerings. This is the first time I've stitched an Artful Offerings. And I did change my thread to two shades of aqua because I wanted it to match the picture. Okay, and it's all DMC floss. All DMC floss? No, there was a couple, there's one or two um, over dies and I did change those also. The over dies I used, let me see. In case anybody's wanting to know, what did I do with that? The notes. Oh, here we go. Okay, let me show you the. Let me show you my finish first, then I'll talk about that. Okay, I used. Um, this is stitched on 16 count light gingham gray by Fabric Flare. I love this fabric because it has a very subtle print in it. Let me get up a little bit closer. And because of that subtle print, that's the reason why I decided to take out, I didn't stitch any of the letters or the couple of snowflakes that were in there because I, I really liked, I really wanted my light gingham print to show. So I made, me and my sister talked about it and I made the executive decision to eliminate all the letters the alphabet that was in it in the background. It's very pretty. I have seen them. I have seen this pattern done with all the letters, just like it's supposed to be. And it's gorgeous. So it's really a personal preference, whatever you like or whatever, maybe it will make your decision will be made by the fabric that you're using. But I ended up using that light gingham gray by fabric flare. Love it. 16 count. It was so easy to stitch on. Now, if you look at mine, See, the sweater on the deer and the bunnies is really like an aqua. But when you pull the DMC that it called for, it was like a gray green. So I decided to look at my stash and I used two shades, a lighter shade of aqua and a darker shade of aqua. And I used 3811 DMC and then that for the light part of the aqua or the sweaters. And then I used 3849 for the darker shade of aqua that I used. And in the golden beige that called for for the for the deer and the deer legs, the deer head and the legs and his little tail, it actually called for 
um, a different color number and I used 436 just because I like the shade of the, it's like a golden tan. So I used 436 for that. So, um, and then when it came to the bunny's body, I use the over dye by um, Gentle Arts and it's called maple syrup. That's what I used. It called for hazelnut brown and I didn't like how dark it was. So I went in my stash and I found the maple syrup by Gentle Arts. That's what I used for the bunny's body, all three bunny's bodies. Okay. And then the red is the one, the Buckeye Scarlet. I did use the Buckeye Scarlet for the red in both the Cardinal and then in the ornaments and the little belt on the one deer, the little necklaces. And then it, it calls for that same Buckeye Scarlet red in here. And that is by, I have no idea. I, I want to say it's weeks, but you know, look it up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't say it on my pattern. I know. Oh, well. So anyway, that's my finish. I think I'm going to frame this one. I haven't really decided, but I just love it because it's just so cute. And I love the aqua and the red together. So that's my finish of Kind and Gentle by Artful Offerings. And it really... Once you start stitching on that one, I just, I really found that I couldn't put it down. I started it a little bit after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, and I actually finished it. I want to say I finished it like in the first part of March or something like that. I posted it on my Instagram when I had a finish. So, but I, you know, you got to remember I didn't stitch the end of the letter, so that kind of helped move it along a little bit too. Now, the next one that I finished was... One of the two of the Autumn Rolls by Primrose Cottage. Let me show you the pattern again. I have it over here. Here it is. I'm stitching this twice, if you remember from my last video. Stitching it twice. And it's by Primrose Cottage. Same fabric. I'm using the 32 Count Vintage Country Mocha. And voila, I have a finish. Houston, I have a finish. Oh my gosh, I love this one. It's so cute. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see the color. And that, like I said, I used all DMC, all the call for DMC. I love the way it turned out. And it was one of those things that, you know, you're doing a section at a time. So once I got started on it, that's why I just finished the whole thing instead of, I started them both together. But I found that I just I just wanted to get it all done so I could see what it looked like, you know, before I moved on. Now I'll finish up the second one. So that's Primrose Cottage Autumn Rolls. Love this one. You will love that one. And it, like I said, it is all DMC floss. I used all the call for DMC. It's very rich colors. I really liked them. And it looked really good on my vintage country mocha. So the next one that I did was some small ones. So don't be totally impressed that I got some finishes done. I did Oh Christmas 3, and yep, I did all three. By Hands On Design, stitched them on 16 count black Cosmo. Let me go ahead and put all three of them on my board so you can see all three at one time. Aren't they adorable? Oh my gosh. And I used, I did change the blue to a different variegated blue. Let me see if I wrote it down. No, I didn't. If you need to know what blue I used, I used a different one. Um, I can, you know, I'll look it up because I did write it down somewhere. But I, I did all three, all three of the um, actual designs. I'm going to make ornaments out of them, round ornaments. But aren't they adorable? And they were fast stitches. I mean, I think I could stitch one of these in a couple, three nights, maybe, maybe four nights if it wasn't, if I wasn't stitching for a long period of time. But they did turn out really, really cute. I'm really happy with them. And that's hands-on design. Oh, Christmas three. I've seen this stitched by you know a ton of people last year, and I just I had to do it. And like I said. I bet you I don't have more than two weeks in all three of them, you know, 
and that's just stitching, you know, a little bit in the evening. So the next one I finished was, it's a cardinal, and I don't have the pattern because it's a freebie, and it's from Crosette Agogo, and you can get her, it's, it's supposed to be a cardinal in a cloche, so it's supposed to have like a white cloche around it, but as I had talked about it, prior in my prior video I said I wanted to make it an oval ornament and I just wanted the cardinal so I eliminated the actual glass cloche that was around it and I just did the cardinal on the branch and I just used all DMC and it's stitched on a 28 count dwarfed um, by picture this plus Lugana two threads over two but I do love the way that red pops off that blue. Really, really nice. I'm really happy with it. It's going to make a nice small little ornament. So I was able to stitch that one. The worst part of that one was like the little bit of back stitching on these branches and stuff. That took a little bit more time. But I stitched this one up fairly quick. Also, I think it was a, another four-day stitch. And like I said, you know, it... I didn't stitch the cloche, so, you know, that eliminated some time there for me also. Now, the last one that I finished is one that 10 million people have stitched because it was a freebie, and it's by Little House Needleworks, and it's called Seven Pines, and I stitched mine on 28 count light taupe, two threads over two, two threads over two, and all DMC, I just switched it up. It did call for one green in the trees, but I just picked out two greens from my stash in my regular DMC. And then I used B5200 for the white because I wanted it to pop. And I used, I think, 321 for the red. It kind, it called for like a almost like a rusty color. Just, you know, something this simple, just pull out your DMC um, floss and pick out the ones that you like. Because, you know, I just chose ones that, you know, were colors that I use for my Christmas decorating. Because I am going to make this an ornament. I don't think it'll be too big. I hope not. I'm going to make it a little ornament. I was going to look and see in my stash if I have anything, a little wooden thing I can pop it in. But I thought that turned out cute. It's called Seven Pines by Little House Needleworks, and it is a free chart. Just go to their Facebook page and you can get it. You'll love it. And it was another, fa that, that was another fast stitch, like two or three days, or uh, maybe about three days, maybe four. But I mean, really, that's why I got, you know, I got those six or well, five little ornaments, all the fronts stitched. So if you think about it, I got five, six, seven, I got seven out of my 24 that I had, for the year 2024, I had 24 kitted up projects. Seven of them are finished. And I did show some good progress on ones that are also, I'm hoping to get some more time on. Now, I have thought about adding some new, you know, adding some new projects in since I did finish seven. Um, I do have my eye on a couple of them. I'm still thinking about them. So if I decide to add them to my lineup for 2024, I'll be sure to share it. Um, you know, you see people working on stuff on either FlossTube or on Instagram, and you just like, I gotta do that. <laughs> You know, so before you know it, you want to kit something else up. But what I'm trying to do is trade a small project for another small project or a medium sized project for another medium sized project instead of having, you know, all large projects or all small projects. That way I can kind of bounce back and forth. I feel like I get more done that way. That's just me. You know, I know a lot of people who all they work on are these huge big girls, you know, and, um, uh, yeah, I can't do that. Uh, as you can see, you know, if you looked at, watch my later, um, a video, a couple videos ago where I showed the Halloween village, that's a massive, huge project. And I will be working on that until I'm 125. So, you know, just stick around. Maybe I'll get some progress on it. I wanted to kind of get these, this autumn rules done and my Halloween night ones done. That's four projects. And then once those Halloween ones are an autumn one is behind me, I'm going to, I want to go back to my Halloween village and get some time in on that. So let's see. 
Okay, I think that is going to be... Oh, no, wait a minute. i gotta fit, I got to show you my cross-stitch finishes that I have. You will love this. Now, let me grab them all. They're back here. Um, I'm putting away my Easter stuff, so I wanted to show you this one. I don't have the pattern um, because it was a printout, so I don't have a picture of it. It's a Primrose Cottage, and it's called... Spring Wishes, that's what it's called. And it's Primrose Cottage Stitches. And it's very, very cute. I stitched it on a 25 count opalescent white Lugana. And the bow's a little crooked, but that's okay. Just, you know, simple flat finish. It actually sits on that frame that I magnet on so I can get you know, I, I think I showed my Valentine little design that I had on there. So it's one little, I got this little stand at Hobby Lobby and I haven't seen it there because I bought it several years ago. And, but I'm sure you'll, you can find something equally as cute, but it did turn out really cute. I was real happy with it. This sits in my, my Easter display in front of my kitchen sink. So I get to see that every day. I do believe I used all the call for colors on that. It's called Springtime Wishes by um, Primrose Cottage Stitches. I love their patterns. They're just, they're so well made. I love the color charts. I love the heavy cardstock that you get when you, when you order a pattern. That one I did do a PDF download, so I didn't get the hard cardstock. But when I get a chance to buy the actual pattern, I do because... I like the cardstock that it comes on, and Primrose is really good about the way they print their charts. They're just fabulous. You won't, you will not be disappointed. Now, let's see here. The next one is, and I didn't pull the pattern. It's a Prairie Schooler. It's a little. It's the. I think the pattern is called Bunnies, from Prairie Schooler. Okay, and I just picked out these two husband and wife little bunnies. I stitched them on black. Because I saw somebody on Instagram has stitched them on black and it was, I just really liked it. I like the way the colors pop. It's all DMC floss. And then I just added some fabric down below, sewed it to that, the bottom of the, um, like I was going to make a pillow, but I knew I was going to pop it in this frame. And then I just added some brick rack and a bow and a, and a button in the middle of the bow to hide the multitude of sins of that bow. And then I just mounted it on a piece of sticky board and I popped it into this deep frame. As you can see, the frame is, is a deep, it has a deep section in there so I could just pop it right in there. And I got it at Hobby Lobby. It's an Easter 2020, so it's older, but they make these kind of things all the time. You, you see them, you know, for every holiday season and I pay $2 for it. So I made it a permit. I glued it in. I made it permanent because I figured for two dollars I can, and it's and it's wide on the bottom, so it sits. You know, it's a sitter. So I really, really, really like this guy. He's so cute, or him and her. They're both very cute. And I just took out part of the design. I didn't do the whole thing. I don't think. But you know, look up Prairie Schooler bunnies. That's the name of the pattern. Okay. Now, the last one is not one that I stitched myself. My sister Lisa stitched it for me. If you remember back, uh, I talked in my videos how um, we do a Christmas draw for a sister draw. And it's, you have to make the gift. And she cross-stitched me this Easter gift back in 2023. Isn't it adorable? Hopefully the glare won't be too bad. Isn't it so cute? And this pattern, she looked it up for me because I, I tried to find it, but it's called Sample of the Seasons. It's a leaflet by Leisure Arts, and the designer, her name is Gail Busey. I'll, I'll put all that information down below in the show notes in case you're looking for this particular pattern. She stitched it on 14 count white Ada because she did stitch this 10 years ago, so... Now she's stitching on all kinds of beautiful fabrics. So, but isn't it really cute? And I usually have this set on my one front room fireplace mantle with some Easter decorations around it. It's very, very cute. She did a simple um, frame by herself. She framed it herself in just a frame that she bought at like, you know, Hobby Lobby or Michael's or something. It's just like a regular, I think it's like an eight by 10 picture frame. And then she, I think she had the mat cut is what she did but it did turn out really, really cute. 
Um, my sister really knows how to cross stitch, I'm telling you. <laughs> I just happen to be the lucky one to receive a lot of her stuff. So that is a, fin a fully finished. It's not mine. It is my sister Lisa's. I love it. And um, I display it in my home every spring and Easter. So let's see. The last thing I want to talk about is just if you are interested in any of my um, project folders that I or that for organizing your cross stitch projects. I do have a, I did do a small drop um, a day or a day ago, and there's still a few more pieces left. If you are interested in those, I'll show you what's left in from this drop. And maybe you can jump over to my Etsy shop and see if they're still available. The first one is the Halloween um, Project Notions folder. And this one holds the five by seven. It's got two zipper sides. It's snapped shut down the side. This fabric does glow in the dark, okay? And it's the regular size, so it holds the five by sevens. The next one is like a Harry Potter witch hat. Same size. It holds the five by seven. Oops, upside down. Holds the five by seven. This is the interior and two zipper very, very cute. I love this fabric. It's very, very bright. The next one is Queen Bees. And here's the interior. The floss buddy. Another side for the zipper. Okay. The next one is a gray floral. So it's a nice everyday one. Here's the interior. Floss buddy. The other side. So that's a great floral. And then I have two. I may only have one left of this one. This one's a really cute vintage um, patriotic trucks and cars and vehicles. It's very cute. I love this fabric. Here's the interior stripe binding. Oops. Interior floss buddy. And here's the other side. So those are, those are the ones that are left from that drop. If you're interested in any of those, um, you know, hop on over to my Etsy shop, see what you can get, what you can get your hands on. Hopefully that will, um, you know, you'll be able to snag the ones that, you know, maybe that you're interested in. Maybe you're looking for to kit up some Halloween or kit up a, um, a patriotic project or that everyday one or that B one is perfect for like everyday stuff. So I think that's it guys for today. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to stop in and, and visit with me. I'm hoping that maybe you'll give me a thumbs up, maybe leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, follow me over there on Instagram so you can see my updates and what I'm doing, what my progress on projects, or you know, if I um, post something about one of the quilts that I'm working on or any new project bags that I'm making or fabric lines that I'm purchasing, I usually post pretty regularly on Instagram. So if you wanna follow me over there, I'll link everything down below. If you have any questions, if you'd like to leave a comment, I will respond to you personally. Um, so be sure to check back within a day or two. I will respond to you. Um, but I appreciate all the new subscribers that have come from Dina's Nightly Stitcher once again. And please share my channel with your friends and your cross-stitching buddies or your, or your quilting buddies, maybe machine embroidery buddies. Feel free to share it. Tag me in what you're working on. If you want to join me on one of my um, quilting endeavors for 2024, please do. Let me know about it. Tag me in anything that, you know, that I might be working on. Tag me what, what on Instagram or whatever so I can see it. You know, sometimes it's hard to see um, with the way they do um, Instagram and and um, like FlossTube and YouTube videos on YouTube, they you know it's about how the how the algorithm runs and you know the more likes you get, the more comments you get, the more views you get, the more it gets popped up so that other people can see it in their feed. So I hope that everybody has lots of stitching time and just. I always say, just get started. 
with something. And before you know it, you've got two or three projects going and you're excited about it. Be sure to post on Instagram and so that everybody can see what you're working on too. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you here next time at the Quilted Story. Bye-bye for now.